my aunt, I'm older, but he was a mentor to me. Uh, he was uh, my style icon. He was uh, my car guru. He was my motorcycle maiden. God, the things that we did together, cross country trips forever, they were just part of the best parts of my life and things that I'll absolutely never forget. He was my friend, but he was also really like my brother. I never had a brother, but he was as close to a brother as I could have ever wished for and hoped for. And that's a role that was forever very important to me. Mark spent a lifetime of hard work. Hard work for Abe and Dave, then hard work for him and his dad, and then hard work with him and his son. It was always family, but it was always hard work. But he knew how to party. I gotta tell you, he just was the life of the party. The last one out of the room, the guy who turned the lights out, that's just what he did. But he also did something else that we should all take a lesson from. In Mark's more recent years, he was happy. I mean, whatever we want to think about, whatever he was doing, he was happy. A lot of thanks, because you really made Mark's life really a pleasure. I mean, it was, it, it was a joy to see because he celebrated happiness. Yeah, we did talk about that a few times. Uh, I mean, we each thought we were probably going to go to a lot of cliff or a wheel before one of our race cars on the Colorado Grand and we would all disappear into the wilderness. But we watched both Abe and Dave, you know, in the hospital with tubes and needles and pills and medication. And Mark always said, you know what, I don't, I don't really want to go out like that. So the lesson, he had the benefit of living his life with a lot of joy and a lot of happiness, and he had the benefit of going out the way somebody who lived that kind of life really should go out. We had a little bit of a happy experience. We never took off on a road trip, but you know, it's kind of rainy today. Uh, but let me tell you, Mark, when you go through the pearly gates, there's going to be somebody standing there with their hand on her hip saying, well, what took you so long? <laughs> Later this week, we will welcome and bless the new Hebrew month of Elul, the month preceding the High Holy Days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It is on these days that we reflect on our lives, how we have lived in the last year, and how we would like to orient ourselves to live in the future. This is a time of deep personal reflection. It is a time to explore the ways we have loved, lived courageously, and considered the role we've had in this world. In this way, we reflect on Mark and the legacy he left for you. Someone who saw friends as family, someone who loved work and loved what he did. What a blessing to live life in this way. And as you spoke about Mark's love of his auto shop, his love of adventure, and tapering cars and motorcycles, I thought about what he may have been trying to communicate with his passions. Perhaps it was in the restoration of antiques, that things that seem broken can be repaired with much love, care, and attention to detail. Perhaps it was in his love of adventure. There is always something new to see, some new place to uncover, someone new to meet. Of course, he talked to the family was above all. Mark's most precious times were those he spent with each of you here in Chicago or in Skokie, in Mexico, traveling our country and the world. This time in our calendar teaches us to assess who we are and who we want to be. Mark's memory is now an ever-living part of you. The lessons that you learned from him, that life was fun, that he loved the way he lived it, even until the end. And that inspire you, giving you a deeper sense of meaning and purpose, and hopefully a sense of comfort amidst this great sadness that you feel at this time. 
Mark's pursuit of travel and journey reminded me of an important poem by Rabbi Alvin Fein. He writes, birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey. From childhood to maturity, from youth to age, from innocence to awareness, and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again. From health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead. We see that victory lies not in some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. So for those of our time, and Mark's memory be the everlasting blessing. At this time, we will recite the memorial prayer of the Elmer Rock. Please rise.